Hello friends and everyone watching. Here we have a LN167 Toyota Hilux. Yeah, original owner from you. And he's decided to bring it in because he needs to get the uh, performance of the car going a bit better. He's opted to turbocharge it, which uh, I'll give you guys a little bit of a rundown in a minute on. A little bit of a backstory with these turbo kits. Back in 2017, I bought myself a Hilux Surf for two grand. That is uh, every dollar I had in the bank account at the time. And I spent all of it buying the car. <laughs> so. Luckily, uh, my old man, he wrecked Saabs and had a few like, you know, random European cars around. And I noticed that on the Saab, <laughs> there was this turbo. I thought that the turbo that came on that surf, which is the CT20, was a bit inefficient. Like I just felt like the car didn't have much low down punch to it and it just didn't perform that well. So I grabbed that turbo off the bench from one of the cars that my old man had wrecked and uh, got it on my surf at the time. And that was a Garrett GT 1752. I had no idea what that even meant at the time. I just knew that small turbos worked really well on diesels. It went so much better. I used all sorts of random intercooler piping to do a front mount as well. But it gave me a lot of answers because I realized this works really, really well. Fast forward to 2024 and this is where it's landed. This here is pretty much as good as it's gonna get now in terms of production of these kits. I think that they look absolutely amazing. There's nothing out there that's quite like it in terms of style and function and performance and fitment. It's all Australian made parts, every single piece of it, Australian made. I'm really proud of this kit and I'm really proud of the work that the boys do here to make these sort of kits possible. And the fact that it stems from an idea back in 2017 on my $2,000 Hilux surf that I bought. So that's the context. That's how this exists. Today, we use a Garrett GBC17-250. And uh, yeah, they're an awesome thing. We, um, we see really good results, which we're gonna look at now today. So, we got Josh here on the dyno. Wave to the people, Josh. So, Josh is doing all our mechanical diesel tuning here in house. So, he's gonna give us a little bit of a um, start to finish overlook on how these turbo kits perform on the 5L Hilux. So, we're gonna start today with a base run. It has, yeah, nothing's been touched yet, has it? Okay, so. These normally make around 60 to 70 horsepower with that turbo added in like stock form, maybe like 50, 55. I've seen them as low as 36 horsepower with no turbo on them. So we've already picked up a little performance increase just by adding the turbo, but now we're gonna go and tune the car and get our optimum result. We wanna see around 100 horsepower at around 15 PSI boost and a 20 to one AFR. So Josh is gonna target that today on the dyno. And um, yeah, I reckon, I reckon we're gonna get it because we've done this hundreds of times and those are the results we see over and over again. Five. 7.8, 130 newton meters of torque. Okay, now that we've established that the car only makes 57 horsepower, we are gonna talk about how Josh is gonna give it a bit more power. So what we have is our air to fuel ratio and it's quite lean. So 25 to one off the bottom, as soon as it makes that 12 pound of boost, which turbo set to it's at 27 to one so the current mixture of air and fuel is far too lean so there's too much air far too much air not enough fuel so it's not going to make power without the fuel there because these things are pretty simple when it comes to dyno tuning them it's a very straightforward process we have um we literally have the fuel screw and a lot of people joke about oh cowboy tune fuel screw this that whatever but it is literally as simple as it gets with these things it's more important to essentially make sure that the car's got a nice free-flowing intake system, there's no boost leaks, a good exhaust system, the pump's in good condition, the injectors are in good condition, good air filter, things like that. That almost matters more when it comes to tuning these than the actual ability to 
wind the fuel screw in to increase the fuel. So we find that initially with an AFI like that, we're gonna need like a whole full turn on the fuel screw um, and they're wound inwards to increase the fueling. So once we do that, it's also gonna bring the idle up as our fuel delivery is gonna be higher, therefore the engine's gonna run at a higher RPM. So then we need to adjust the idle adjustment back out to suit around that sort of 650 to 750 RPM. That's enough of me talking. I just, I can't believe how clean this thing is. We see a lot of these and you got to appreciate one that's this tidy, like it's just, there's so many small things that make it, make it so, it's just like this is not even, it's not even worn. It's got some Ks on it, 300,000. So at 300,000 Ks, we also, um, we chuck some fresh set of injectors in it as well because that's important to consider when it comes to how you're gonna tune your car. Having fresh injectors is one of the most important parts in tuning. Okay, so he just gave it a turn of the fuel screw. And this is what I mean when tuning is not just about winding the fuel screw in. I reckon, so a full turn of the fuel screw, and it's only gotten that much richer, which is which is not a whole lot, and it only made an extra 20 odd horsepower and, you know, 40 odd newton meters of torque gain. So that's not a whole lot, is it? That's not what we normally see. So, free hack when tuning, Look, this here is probably not giving us very much throttle. So we're gonna get some free horsepower, I reckon. We're gonna change nothing but the floor mat. All right, now run her again. <laughs> All right, here he goes, everyone. Nothing but the floor mat, remember that. Closer. We're gonna give it a little bit more fuel. Maybe that wasn't a full turn. But yeah, it did change a fair bit just by uh, changing the format, so. <laughs> Quick bit of advice for everyone. That is not a boost compensator pump, by the way. Everyone thinks because it's got this thing here, it makes it boost compensated. That is actually altitude compensated and it adjusts the fuel pump depending on the altitude, altitude in which you're operating the vehicle at. If you're in a high altitude area, it'll adjust the fueling. So not a boost compensator, don't get confused. Boost compensators have little nipples on them to allow boost reference into the top of the pump. All right, so as you've seen, um, it was still a little bit lean. So I gave it a little bit more, more fuel screw. Um, we'll run that up again, see how that goes. Um, hopefully it's sort of around that 21 to one air farmer and that 15 pound of boost and that 100 horsepower. See how it goes. Like I sort of predicted at the start, we ended up at 100 horsepower and 210 newton meters of torque. It's not the first one we've done, so those results aren't particularly surprising. Uh, they're pretty consistent in how they make their power. This thing has been fitted with a three inch exhaust. It has had about, what is, about a turn and a half of fuel screw, about a turn, and a, roughly about a turn and a half in of fuel screw. Now that will be completely different for each car, so don't use that as your guide to how much you should give it, but to tell you how this one went, and that's how much it needed. That's the supporting mods to do it, as well as obviously the HD Auto Turbo Kit. If you haven't seen one of these before, our dyno shows our power and our torque. Obviously red is gonna correlate with red and blue is gonna correlate with blue. Now, one of the most important things to consider when it comes to tuning and diesels is where we actually want the torque and power position. So if you can see here clearly, all below 3000 RPM, we have our biggest increase in torque. It's, um, it's a 65% uh, increase in torque overall. Power in an engine is made up top. Uh, you know, so we're gonna see the biggest <coughs> increase in power up top above 
foot at 3300 RPM. However, we still have managed to pick up previously where it was at um, say 30 horsepower, we're now making 55 horsepower, that's at 1800 RPM. So massive improvement across the whole graph in power and massive improvement in torque. Now AFRs, this thing's still relatively lean, which is awesome. We got our results, we got what we wanted, we managed to hit all expectations there while maintaining a super safe, very lean air fuel ratio. It does not dip below 20 to one. It, it uses all the fuel provided to it to make boost. So we're seeing a 12 pounder boost from 1800 RPM. So the benefit of using this turbocharger amongst any other is that it is able to flow so efficiently down low and so efficiently up top. It's able to produce nearly all of its boost immediately and it does not taper off up top. It's able to spool up down low and hold on all the way up top and that's not forced it's just it's just on the wastegate so if it wants to open it will it's not it's it's a 14 pounder boost it's not like we're holding it shut hold it on for longer that's naturally doing that so that's uh that's also represented in the afr we've got a nice flat 20 to 1. now all these things are just numbers on the dyno how that's going to drive on the road now is a completely different story because we now literally have nearly double the amount of power so if you thought the car was acceptable in the past it's like putting another engine in it it's just that's the sort of improvement that you're going to get from fitting one of these kits we're going to get this thing off the dyno uh give you a little um just a little drive of it thank you to josh who did a sick job tuning this thing um the cowboy himself mr boiling at four by four so we're not trying to build a race car we're really just trying to get the car up to a standard that is similar to what you would expect from a uh, sort of entry level common rail, you know, dual cab ute. Like, let's look at something like the Tritons and the hot, like the KUN 26s or N80 Hiluxes. They only make between 100 to 130 horsepower at the wheels from factory untuned. So, to get this thing up to about 100 horsepower, you know, reliably, it puts it in the same category as those kind of cars now which if you love the old girls and you have owned the car like you know obviously this vehicle here has been owned from you and you don't want to upgrade you just want to upgrade the car into you know a modern power standard then it's a hundred percent an option for you to consider because i get it like i i still got old 80 series myself like i've got uh, i've got a couple of newer cars too but nothing like getting into the old 80 series it's just one of the best things ever i've had heaps of these hiluxes and um, yeah, so I can definitely understand wanting to upgrade your older car and, and keep it and rather than just going and buying a new one. So to be able to do that and get it up to a hundred horsepower, it may not seem like a lot, like, you know, a lot of people can look at it one way, it's like, oh, that's a lot of money to spend on, not a lot of power. But if it makes the car twice as good, then what, what else guarantees that? Like what else is gonna get you twice as much of anything? This thing is ridiculously clean. It's, abs it's actually a pleasure to be able to have this thing in our shop, have cars as well maintained like this in our shop and have people trust us to actually keep them as clean as I drop them off. So here's a one final look in the daylight of the kit all fitted up. I think that of course I would, but I think they're one of the best looking things ever in that powder code black. So if you're thinking of turbocharging your Hilux, now you've got some results to look at. You've got the fit and finish there, of a really nice three inch exhaust system, gorgeous Garrett turbo, and a really well functioning, well tuned and appropriate setup for this car. So if you've liked what you've seen today and want to see more uh, Hiluxes, uh, Land Cruisers, Isuzus, any 4x4 is getting built and tuned on the dyno, then make sure you like the video and subscribe to our channel because we're trying to do one a week and it's working pretty good at the moment. So Max is going to do some more, uh, some more how to install videos and I'm going to keep doing some of these. So jump on the channel, give us a like, give us a subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.